In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front wheel hub and bearing assembly on this Nissan Altima. If you need this or any other part for your car, check us out at 1A Auto. Let's get started. If your vehicle has hubcaps, remove those first. Just simply pull on them and set them aside. Use a 21 millimeter socket and remove all five lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Use a 22 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts that hold the caliper and bracket assembly onto the knuckle. Leave this one in a couple threads while you take off the lower one. Support the caliper, remove the last one. Oh, make sure that washer stays with the bolt. Remove the caliper and secure it on top of the knuckle where it can't put any pressure on the brake hose. Remove your rotor. Use some cutters and remove the cotter pin for the axle nut. Do not reuse this, so we're gonna discard it. We're gonna use a new one. Remove this piece. Now use a 32 millimeter axle nut socket and remove the axle nut. If you don't have a power tool to do this, you can put a pry bar between the studs that'll hold the hub from spinning and then you can break this free with a breaker bar. Make sure the axle pushes through. Mine just did. If yours doesn't, take a punch and a hammer, punch right in the center here to break it free from the splines on the hub. It is important that we remove the ABS sensor for this procedure, so take a 10 millimeter socket and remove that bolt. With that set aside, you should be able to pull the ABS wire right out of the knuckle. However, this one is fairly stuck. So with some pliers, I'm going to very gently grab it right on the base Give it a couple twists. Hopefully that breaks it free without actually breaking it. I'm going to spray a little bit of rust penetrant all over. Hopefully it gets inside there and breaks free the rust a little bit. With a flat blade screwdriver, I'm going to try and get right on the base of it, tap it in. This should put some outward pressure on it. Oh, it's coming out. There we go. What you can do at this point if it doesn't pop out is leave the screwdriver in but continue twisting it with the pliers. All right, and that is a saved ABS sensor. Gently set this aside where it cannot get damaged. From behind the knuckle, you'll see four 17 millimeter bolts that we have to remove. They basically make a square pattern. I'm gonna try and get a swivel socket in here and remove all four. Does not matter which one you start with. All right, that's all four. Now take a hammer, tap the wheel bearing back and forth, top to bottom until it breaks free from the knuckle. Remove it. Here's the backing shield. I'm gonna take this off as well. And now we have all of this to clean up. And actually this ring here is also part of the wheel bearing got stuck in there. So we're gonna have to remove that as well. Because of the corrosion, this won't slide out, which it should. There it is. Okay, now we can push the axle aside, take a wire wheel, and do a lot of cleaning here. We need to get rid of all that corrosion. Add a layer of anti-seize on the entire surface of the knuckle that you cleaned. 
and you want to make sure that it's not too much but it's enough to coat it so that it doesn't corrode in the future. If you put too much it'll just squeeze out and make a mess so that's why you want to try to keep it to a minimum but of course cover everything. I'm also going to add a little bit to the splines of the axle. This is to prevent it from seizing in in the future. I know it wasn't seized this time, but that doesn't mean that in the future, when the wheel bearing needs to be removed again for whatever reason, it will not seize again. So this is just a little bit of future proofing. Don't put any on the threads though, just on the splines. On the back of the wheel bearing, you'll notice three cutouts for the ABS sensor. When you put it on, make sure that one of the cutouts faces towards the ABS hole. And of course, don't forget to put on your backing shield. Give this a couple twists to line it up with the axle. Clamp this all together. All right, now that's on, but of course, don't let it go for too long because it's not bolted on yet, so let's do that next. Let's start in all the bolts. That top one is started in. Try to start in the other one. They're pretty difficult to reach. If you push the axle out, it might help. And you might also have to turn the wheel bearing a little bit on the knuckle to get the threads to line up. Once you have them all started, snug them up in a cross pattern. The reason for the cross pattern is to pull the wheel bearing tight up against the knuckle. The torque for these is 65 foot pounds. All right, that's all of them at 65 foot pounds. Double check them if you want. I also put a little bit of grease on the half of the sensor that is closest to the wire, not on the tip. Slide that in, start in the mounting bolt. With it started, snug it up, and this is a very small bolt, so once it bottoms out, which is here, about an eighth of a turn at most, is plenty tight for this. Make sure it's fully seated, and once it's tight, you're good to go. Thread the axle nut back on, bottom it out, and then we'll torque it to 135 foot-pounds. To prevent the hub from spinning, I'm going to put a pry bar right between the lug studs. I'm going to face it down so that as this wants to spin, it's going to stop it. Once again, 135 foot-pounds. All right, that's it right there. Reinstall this cap and make sure that the slots line up with the cotter pin hole. If they don't, just put it on another spline and that should do the trick. Install a new cotter pin. I'm gonna use my cutters to bend it over and lock it in. Apply a thin layer of anisees to the surface of the hub. You wanna make sure it doesn't rust in the future even though it's clean now, that doesn't mean it's gonna stay like this forever and any rust that builds up here will swell and start pushing the rotor off. Or if it doesn't, it'll at least seize the rotor on, then you'll have trouble removing it next time it needs to come off. Once again, a thin layer is key because if you put too much, it'll squish once you put the rotor on, it'll start flinging out all over when you drive and it's gonna get on your brakes and you don't want that. I'm gonna also go around the hub bore here, the center, and that's going to prevent the rotor from seizing on. And just double checking all the way around that it is evenly spread, and there you have it. Before putting the rotor on, ensure that the back of it where it mounts to the hub is also clean and free of any rust or raised areas. Slide it over the hub. And to hold it in place, I'm gonna use an old axle nut with a lug nut just to hold it flush while we work. Anything that gets behind it will prevent it from sitting flat, and if you clamp it on there with the wheel and everything, it's going to be slightly off. That'll result in a brake pulsation. Now take the caliper and slide it back over the rotor and line up the two bolts that hold it on. Once you start one, you'll be able to let go to start the other. Snug these both up. The torque for both of these is 107 foot-pounds. Now let's put the wheel on. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all five lug nuts, bottom them out in a cross pattern, 
also in a cross pattern, torque them to 83 foot-pounds. Once again, 83 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Double check them if you want. If your vehicle had hubcaps, make sure you put them on correctly, and that is with the cutout here on the valve stem, otherwise it's not going to go over. Line that up and press these on. At this point, take it for a road test. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you have anything to add, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to check us out at 1A Auto for any car parts that you might need. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching.